jack up the car. And what you want to do is put it right where that little hump is. And then you jack up the car. Then we put a jack under it. We'll put the jack right there. And then we're going to lower it down. Now we've got to remove the tires. Alrighty, this has a bong in it and then we're going to remove this before we remove this we're going to remove this We're going to try with a regular one first And this one's coming off which is a good sign Just because I'm lazy Comes off. That's a T50. I'll pop this off. Little cap. It's your cap for your window. You want to pop that off. Keep that because you're going to put that in the new one. Now, this one, one, two. Just come out. Then comes out. These are 13. Those are 13 millimeter. I'll remove these. Got to remove these, both of them. There's the other bolt. That bolt is a 15 millimeter. Now we're going to pull caliper off. Oh, wait a minute. You got to pull this off. Reach in there and pull that out. That out of there like that. Oh, the metal sensor didn't come out. All right, so you pull this out, get that off of there. That goes off of there. Pull the other caliper out. And then we take a little hook. We hook it here and wait a minute, we hook it here. And I'll hook it to the top. We'll just let it sit up there. Just like that. Hook it up. Like that. And like that.
that back up there. We're gonna work on this now. All right, you need to check these pins right here. They need to be moving, they need to go up and down. Neither one of these move, that one turns. That's, and then you pull this. Pull the rubber down all the way and then you pull these out. They need to be greased. Wow, this one didn't look like it's been greased for a while. Look how dry that is. That's dry. That should not be dry. All right, we're gonna have to grease these up. Oh, this one's a hard one. Okay, if you get a stiff one, you want to take this and you want to turn it like this. If it turns like this, like stiffly to, and it turns a little bit, you're okay. This is what you have to do. But if this doesn't turn at all, you heat this part right here until it gets red hot. And then you grab a hold of it and you twist and you turn back and forth until you can get it to turn. The other option is if you can get it to turn a little bit, like right now I can't do it with my hands. You take one, take an impact and you run it. And you just run it real fast. Let's see how it moves up and down. You want to do that. Once you do that, which this is the 15 millimeter on this one. And you're going to pop the rubber off of it. You can use a screwdriver. I was just being difficult. Pop it off. This one looks like it's dry too. Yeah, look, look at that. Look at that stuff just falling. That's dry. Should not be dry. Now we're gonna pull off the rubber boots. Look. That should not be dry. This one has not been done for a long time. Or somebody hasn't greased it. Pull the other one off. Look at that. Look like sand. Look at it. That's not good. And then you pull the brake pads off. And with those jammed up like that, these were never going to work. See how they got like little rust particles in it? See how it's rusted going across? These weren't used. These were not making contact. And it's because these pins were too stiff. Once they went in like that, they sat there. And these are supposed to go back and forth like that. And I can't even get them in there now. They need to go back and forth like that. And it's dried up in there. You need to put grease on these. This hasn't been used. Look at, look at all this on the outside. It looks like a little bit's been used on the front, but like the outside hasn't been used. Look how rusty that is. That means the brakes are barely touching the, the rotors, meaning that all my braking power is coming from the front. And that's probably why my front brakes gave out. These are bad. See how they're coming apart right there? Right there? I don't know what brake pads these are. There's no name on them. These are probably something that the dealer put on. I've been complaining about the dealer's choice of using copper grease on this. Copper and or no, copper anti-seize is not what you want to use for this. It needs to move in and out. 
Copper anti-seize does not work. This is the stuff I use for brake pins. Use this stuff. This is one of the reasons why you should be doing your own brakes. So you can catch things like this. I'm gonna take sandpaper. See these little, these little uh, indentations right here? You got three of them. Make sure those are clean. There's little grooves right there. All right, these are about as good as you can you expect from them. These are old, but this is what you want to clean. You want to make them shiny. Now, we're going to have to clean out these holes. Now, I just go in and scratch the inside. And then you're going to take your pin and you just run it inside and out. And you're going to spin it around. And just like, what you want to do is rotate it like this inside. And just spin it around. And to me, that seems to get the majority out of there. Enough to use. And then you take the other side like this one, stiff. Put it in there and just run it back and forth. See, I think these being cut the way they are, cut down, they seem to help. If you put it in there and wiggle it around while you're spinning it. But then you get to the point where you just, woo, spins around really easy. And you take the other one. That one's got a little bit of grime to it. Seems to be at the bottom. At the bottom, you just use a screwdriver. Scrape the bottom. Yeah, so you can get yourself a little brush and do it too. But I find this way seems to be okay at getting it done. Alright, that's enough. Pour it out. Spray all the stuff out of it. Let it set. And you just let that dry up. These, these are pretty much done. I knocked all the stuff out of there. Just rubber now. So, these go back. It doesn't make a difference which way you put it. They're exactly the same. So what I do is I put a little bit of this grease on the lip. And then I force it back up in there. And then I twist it. And that gets grease all over the outside. And that lubricates and it keeps it from rusting. Put a little bit on there. Like that. And then we put that back on. And we spin it. Uh, we put that back on. Wait a minute, I got a stone there. Okay. Put that back on. And we spin that around so it lubricates the whole pin. Now we're going to lubricate the pin. Now 
And yes, I put a good bit because this this pin wasn't lubricated and I took it all the way up to the bottom of the little lip there. And again, this was never, this was not lubricated right. So then I take this and I twirl it around there. And then I take this pin and I put it right in there and I spin it the whole way down. Now, this needs to be pushed all the way down. See how it's bouncing there? It needs burped. Burping is when you take this and you pop it open so the air comes out. Now, when that goes back shut, see how flat it is? It's not like this. It's flat. That's how you want it. You want it to bounce back. You want it to bounce back in. Like that. That's how you want your pins to sit. And you put your grease on, grease on the outside. Put a little grease around the bottom. And I take a little bit of grease and I put it in the hole. Like I said, I don't normally put this much grease, but since this one didn't have grease to begin with, I'm putting this much. So when you put it in there, this one's a tight one. So you want to kind of wiggle it back and forth as you're putting it in to release the air. And you want to spin it. You want to try to get as much air out of, of there as you can. See? See what I'm telling you about? See that pin? Now you push it all the way tight and use a screwdriver or, some, or something to get in there like that. You squeeze this all the way down and then you let go of it. And that's how you burp. See? Now when you pull out, it automatically sucks back in. That's what you want. Okay, now we're going to pull these shims off. Pull that off. Pull that off. Then I get my file out. These are not bad, but I still file down the edges. Can you see that? No, you can't see that. I file down the edges. And then I file the middle. And then I file this. And a little bit of this. Spray it. A little bit more. Now, what I'm doing is filing to get this stuff off the top of it. I'm not following to shape this. I'm not following to cut into the metal. I don't want to cut completely into the metal. I want to get this brown stuff off. Anything that that is not making this flat, I want to get off. See, like right here, this dust that's on there, you want to get that off. And that's fine. That right there is fine. See that? That's all you need to do. And then you're going to take these. So, put the side with the little dimples inward. Push it all the way over. And 
and it should snap right in. That's how it should go. Snaps right in. On this one, do the same thing. Make sure you push all the way in. On both sides. Like that. And that's all the way in. Now, here's going to be the problem. Everybody's going to have a fit over. Okay. I always put a little, a light thing of grease right here. Now, and I've never had a problem with it. Just a light thing of grease right there. And technically, I actually put grease on the inside too. But that's here and there. I'm just putting it on the outside because the inside did not look bad. But I always put them on there. Uh, some people usually put them on the ears. Same concept, but I put them on there instead of brake calipers. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to sand this off a little bit. Just basically this surface right here. If there's anything on that surface, you want to get it off. That's good enough. Now I'm going to spray it down a little bit. And that's good enough. Now, I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to try to pull this off of here. Just wiggle. There we go. Look at that. All rusty in there. Hmm. We're going to clean up all this first. They use copper grease right there. Copper anti-seize. Alright. So, you can either do it this way. that or you can either do it this way or you can get yourself a brass wheel put on drill And that's all you need to do right there it's all you need to do you don't have to go overboard with everything and that's that i'll put a little bit of anti-seize on the thread and we're going to put it in there get that started and now I'll put my cap back on now I'm going to run the wire this one's going to be a little rough all right so get up here so we can see the wire starts down here you pop it off the joint this comes off the the filler pops off and then we come down around and then right here 
Now, pop that off right there. And then up here, can you see that? Yeah, you pop that off. Then you go up a little higher. You're gonna pop this off. And then up in here, it'll pop that off. And then that comes, that goes all the way around. I don't understand why they run it away over here, but there it is. And then all you're gonna do, pull this up a little bit. Pops up. And then you're gonna pull all that back through. And that's the wire going. I'm gonna run this end around this shock. All right, that other grommet. But now you take this, snaps in. Push it in, make sure it snaps. I'm not 100% sure where this goes because this one's sticking up. I'm not 100% sure where this, where this actually connects to. There's really no holes right there. If anybody can tell me, it's the first time I've done it it's on this truck. I don't know where the hole is would actually be for this to f go into. Well, this is not supposed to be way back there. I don't know. Oh, uh, anyway, pull this cable out. Pull this through. And then I'll put you back on this side so you can see the reverse. I'm going to put this one on up here. That's in. Come down. It's in. And then we're going to go under. We're going to put that right there. And then we're going to come across and put that right there. And I'll put you back on this side. And that's where it is right there. On that side. This is number one. All right. Oh. In case you guys need to know, that is the model number for this wire. Okay, that's in, that's in, that's in. All right, now let's put the bracket back on. You guys are sort of in the way. Try this a different way. Oh. All right. Take the other one. Reverse order on what, how we put it together, how we took it apart. You guys see? No, you guys can't see. There you go. Down. 
click. Click. Now we're gonna do the brakes. Brake pads on the rear. Does not make a difference which side's what. That is the new one. And that's the old one. Aha, need some brakes. So we're gonna take this, the bow end out. Oh, there we go. It's all the way at the bottom, like that. Put it in. Turn it a little bit. Pops right in. Look at that. That's what it's supposed to be. I'm gonna take a little bit of this stuff. Put it right there, right there. And all the way around here, because I don't want it to to rust up. A little bit of grease on there. And I don't want it to rust up, so I'll put a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Alright, so we lift that up off of there. I drop this. Now we go back down. Now we take this, whip it around, put the back side in first, squeeze up to the front, push these in, and there we go with that. And we have new bolts. I like these because they got a head on them. They got a shoulder on them. Click. And this is what happens when you don't have the right wrenches. You need the thin wall wrenches to go in here. All right, the brake sensor. Now, after all that, you want to put it over the bleeder screw. That goes over, and then the cap goes on top of that. That holds it together. Now, you're going to put it on the back one. And you're just going to put it in between the little holes. And you're just going to wiggle it. And it'll eventually just snap in. Just like that. Just like that. You got the sensor on. Okay, so that is the back brakes put on. You have to bed these in. And... Also, before people start talking, saying things, these are zinc plated rotors. I don't need to clean them off before I put it on. Because there's no, if it has a, a film on it, like a, a, a rubber or a oil type film on it, you have to get it off. But with the zinc plated, you don't have to get it off. What you want to do is clean it. Clean your rotor some. So I am going to clean it some. And I'm going to go around the outside and get the dirt off of it. With the stuff that I put on. We need to put the tire back on.
we're going to get this off the jack stands by raising it up. Rid of that. And now we're going to let it down. And then we're going to torque them. I torque mine to 100. One. I know it's supposed to be like 103. But. I just do mine to 100. One more. Yep. And we're done. All right. After you do your brakes, you install your brake pads. You want to get in your car, truck and you want to pump the brakes without the engine running. And then you want to start the truck. You want to pump your brakes a couple more times. All right, and then you want to go back down to normal ride. And now we're going to go bed in the brakes. Let's go down the road here. Break in the, the brakes. We're just going to drive here. And we're going to get some distance and then we're going to hit the brakes so you don't want to stop completely and drive a little farther basically you want to do this like three four times that's all there is to it yeah they're going to tell you you need to go miles so many miles per hour and all this stuff it's so basically if it's getting better it's getting better I'll do it one more time, no, two more times, and then that'll be it. And then your brakes should be fine after that. You're basically just taking off the coats of the rotor and the brakes. It seems to brake pretty good to me. All right, let's go down one more time. Tell me if the brakes feel pretty good I'll get up I'm up to 25 miles an hour it stopped all right now and that's the breaking in procedure